Welcome to the Tech Ranch, where we explore the world of living with technology. Get ready to take a deep dive into the latest gadgets, apps, and innovations with your hosts, the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson, and his trusty co-host, Steve Botkin. Join us on this exciting journey and don't forget to visit thetechranch.com for even more exclusive content. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Marlo and Steve to the Tech Ranch. I thought what we would do today, Steve, on the Tech Ranch is talk a little bit about the apps and things that we use for travel. Oh, yeah. I think that this is very timely because people are always wanting to travel. travel. Memorial weekend. Why are you pointing at my nose? No, it's scratching mine. Oh. I had an itch. <laughs> like, what do I got on my nose? No, you don't have anything. <laughs> I just had an itch. I got it. Okay. That's good. It's okay. <laughs> Sometimes people do yeah. that. So do you like to travel over the summer? I travel a lot for not necessarily recreation, but for work or dog shows. Okay. So I, I do do go to a lot of dog shows. You do do. You do, do a lot of dog shows. That's yeah. good. Pun intended, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Caught that there. No, I, I I try to do work and vacation at the same time because I'm busy. I, I try to multitask. Do you tend to travel more over the summer locally? because of better road conditions or whatever, or does it not really matter to you? No, it doesn't really matter. Okay. And kind of old school North Dakota, it's like you get where you need to go, just might take you a little longer. Yeah. Weather conditions aside, there I, I really don't have a travel season. I just travel. So what are your pain points to travel? Road construction. Okay. Anything else? Time constraints. Okay. So when you plan out a time and because of road construction or something else, it takes longer than what you right. planned on because trying to budget time all the time is kind of important. Do you find it helpful? So do you use Google Calendar, for example? Yeah. Do you find it helpful when it reminds you that it's now time to leave to get to your destination on time? Oh, I, if it's not in my calendar, it doesn't exist. Because of the the multitasking. So I, I use the calendar a lot. It's like, and I'll put in a trip and I always roll things at least an hour early. So I got to be in across the state or in Minnesota or in Colorado at this time. While I'll, depending on the length of the trip, if I'm driving, flying, or I got to be at the airport, it's, oh, no, bank in some extra time there just in case. But you schedule that, right? Yeah. So what I'm asking you more is... Because if it's is, not in my calendar, it doesn't exist. Because the AI in Google Calendar now will actually estimate the amount of time it takes you to get to your place on time. If I have scheduled something with you at one of my favorite coffee shops around here, my calendar will actually inform me that you need to leave within five minutes to make it there on time. I'll get a, an alert that comes up on my phone from my calendar, which is cool. Okay. So that might and, get me someplace really early because I, I do my own factoring in of, okay, is there road construction? So, but that's what it Google does. Maps, I, Cause I'll take a look at Google yes. maps and with AI, with Google, with the calendar, they're integrating the maps and the calendar. Uh, right. So what they do is they integrate what they consider concurrent traffic conditions, road construction, weather, whatever else it's going to do. And it factors all that stuff in there and tells you approximately how much time it's going to take for you to get there from your calendar. One app rules them all, right? It's convenient. I tend to put the address of where I'm going into my calendar anyway, because if I, and I put all the information I can in my Google calendar, because if I'm meeting with you, I want to know what we're meeting about. If there's any documents, I put all that stuff in there too. And that way, when I get to the meeting, I have everything in one place. There's no, oh crap, I forgot that. I try to keep it yeah. all in that one place. So to me, it's like my calendar is really probably the most important app that I use now because of all that. But I really like that feature because it used to be like coming to the studio today, it'd be like 10 minutes out. It would just, alarm would go off saying that you got to meet Steve at the studio and you got 10 minutes to get there. Now it's changed so that 18 minutes out or whatever it factors in for that travel time is when I get the alert with the cutoff at 10 minutes. So if it's six minutes travel time, then I would get the 10 minute alert saying it's time to go. But if it realizes that it's going to take me 18 minutes to get here, it'll give me that alert instead, which I think is cool. Does it factor in how long it takes you to get up from your desk and walk over to the door and actually get out without talking to people? 
No. Okay. So there's that. The AI is going to have to learn that. You have to train that. that. Yes. And if I need a cup of coffee along the way, I need to do that. Yeah. And all that stuff too. So I should program that in because obviously I don't have coffee in front of me Which is a little weird if we're going to a coffee shop. Why would you stop and get coffee? But I guess that learns (laughs) that as well. No, on the studio run. Oh. Yeah. We could fire up the Keurig. Yeah, we could. First generation Keurig. And by the second hour today, we should have coffee, yes, right? we would. <laughs> this is a second generation Keurig? I, at first, I think. Okay. It's really interesting. Yeah. It just kind of sits there. Remember, we did fire it up one day. It took, one day. It took about 45 minutes for us to figure out how to work it. So that's the second thing I need to get for the studio because I need a power stand right here. So I need to run an extension cord with a six outlet, usually they're the power strips. I'd like to get one that stands a little taller so that you can just plug it in there. So yeah, like a block, we can mount that somewhere in here, right? And then the second thing would be an updated Keurig. Okay. Well, we're so, so that way we can have a cup of coffee in a minute. Hey, just be happy it's here. <laughs> oh, I'm not arguing that at all. I think it's great that we have one in here. I just see that it doesn't get used a whole lot. And I'm sure it's because it's, it's, it's almost like, a collector's piece Yeah, it now. is. I bet it is. <laughs> I bet it is. So anyway, getting back to apps here. I, I have to tell you, I, I'm my biggest thing is probably standing in lines. I don't know if it's just because I've traveled so much over the years and from where we live. I'm not saying I'm not patient either, just so you understand that, because I'm probably one of the most patient guys you'll ever meet. Glad you clarified. But there is something about standing in a line for me, because to me, it's like a it's just such a huge waste of time. I don't feel as much about that as I used to, because you can be on your phone doing some things or whatever. And I notice that people don't complain as much standing in lines now because they have a device that they can catch up on their email or text people. Or and that's just it. I was going to come back to that. How many people do you see standing in line that are just standing in line? Nobody. Nobody's nobody. just standing in line. Unless you're like the next person up. Yeah. And then you're getting ready for the transaction. But other than that, you're on, most people are on their device, which is interesting too. And it doesn't matter if you're online at the grocery store, if you're online at the airline counter, yeah. if yeah. you're online at a bus station, yeah. or if you're online waiting for the next Uber or Lyft to show up. Everybody's on their device. Uh, yeah. It's dead time. But know, a but lot of those, it'd be interesting to find out how many people are actually doing other things on that device versus utilizing the app for their mode of transportation for that device. Now, I would say if you're using a Lyft or Uber, you're probably... Because I catch myself going, where's my driver? Where's my driver? Where's my driver? Right, you're you're monitoring it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'm the same way. I'll sit and watch the whole thing. Had a pizza delivered the other night. It's like, why did he turn that way? I'm over here. And Domino's has this tracking thing that even shows you where the driver's at. And we're like... How come he turned right over here? Does not then you realize that maybe the driver has a couple more deliveries. It's not just yours. Well, that's uh, a little arrogant. I won't argue with you. They should only show the driver when they're coming to your house, not to others as well. Although knowing where they stopped for the pizza could be interesting. Like, why is my driver in the bathroom right now? <laughs> Hope he washes his hands. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. But yeah, I catch myself checking to see where the drivers are at all the time. So there's that. But it would be curious to see what other what people do other than checking for their mode of transportation. Are they playing a game? Are they just texting or catching up with emails? A lot of it's social media. You think so? A lot of it's social media. Whether because, it's TikTok hey. or, unless you're in Montana, or uh, Facebook or MySpace. Yeah, <laughs> all of that, right? Welcome back to the Tech Ranch. Let's get back to discovering the latest in technology with the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. So apps that you use for travel. Let's just start with your favorite app. What's your favorite app to use when you travel? Google Maps. Okay. I love maps. Actually, I'm glad to see the paper maps are making a comeback because they are. But I didn't know this. They are. Wow. They're starting to sell more and more paper maps. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Just a nostalgia of it? Or? Sick of driving off cliffs? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so my, my mom and I had this conversation on Mother's Day. I pick her up. We're going to Mohall, North Dakota. They have a greenhouse there where they serve meals in. So you can be surrounded by the plants and stuff. It's actually very cool if you're ever up in that neck of the woods. And anyway, I punch this into... And all the plants are sitting there. It's damn. Yeah. That I just ate Ray. Ham sandwich. <laughs> that is hilarious, actually. Yeah. But yeah, so 
she was telling me about these people when they use their GPS or whatever that they've driven into lakes and whatever else. And I'm like, let me see, what would you trust more, your eyesight or the device telling you to drive into the lake? If you're reading the device and being distracted while driving, then... I suppose you would drive into the lake then, right? It's the nexus of where the two combine right it's the crossroads and then of course we brought up devil's lake because devil's lake of course has expanded the lake itself has expanded a lot over the last few years so there are roads that actually do drive into the lake yes. up there so if google maps hasn't updated for example there's that possibility that you would do that but i just think it's interesting honey i, I used to drive across the country a lot and i would have a door the little door pocket yep full I had a map of every state that I was driving through. And if I was driving through 14 states on a trip, I had probably 18 to 20 maps in the door. It is amazing that we don't have, that we just take off and go someplace now and trust the fact that all the information we have is in a phone. There was a time not that long ago that you bought GPS units separately. Right. It's that was not how dis- it was right away. It's not dissimilar from electronics when you're fishing. Uh, load the lake map. Yep. That, that's what you did. Yep are do now and then but the gps was different it was at that point i remember the big epiphany day because maps are cool i like maps yep. but when i got my gazetter what oh <laughs> what is a gazetter i have never heard of really? this I obviously don't fish enough. No, this is for travel. Just roll. Oh, it's, it's got uh, even every, even more confused it's a book and you either have them by state which it gets into minute details of every backcountry road that you could possibly imagine. Is this a, a device or is this no, paper? No, it's a paper book. Wow. It's like an almanac. Okay. Like, like a big yeah. oversized book. Yeah. But they also have them for the entire country. But you can look up and go, oh, yeah, I need to go on that back road section, whatever, down here. And that's so the, where my secret good pheasants hunting spot was. So, so they make these for both states and then national. Right. So you could buy one for yeah, the because, state of Nebraska if you wanted to. Right. Before GPS, uh, it came through the trucking industry. Interesting. For logistics. Because hmm. they were... And you don't get this anymore? They're still out there. Okay. But hyperactive or uh, hyper accurate. Yeah. Interesting. Any other apps besides the go-to Google Maps? It depends on what my mode of transportation is. So if let's I see, let's say you're let, let's pick on road trips first, because I think okay. with Memorial Day coming up on us, I think most people look at this National as the road first trip day. National yeah. Road Trip Day is the Friday before Memorial Day, which, by the way, I'm going on a road, road trip. trip. So yeah. am I, ironically. Yeah. Where are you going? A dog show. OK. Yeah. I'm going to Pontiac, Illinois. So really? going there, I guess they're pulling a car out of the museum. That's so for me to drive out of, out of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be more appropriate. We're gonna pull this car out of the lake for Marlo. I have no idea what so he drives get it to back drive. into the lake. This should be fun though. And I was trying to get a tux with tails. Do you know how difficult that is right now? In fact, I used to go to Men's Warehouse and all these brands that we talk about on the show should start listening to us. Well, and, yes. and I like Men's Warehouse because when I travel across the country, I do proclamation ceremonies for national days. And I had this Monopoly Man type of tuxedo that I would always rent. And then I would just pick it up at the nearest Men's Warehouse when I get there because they have a big enough network across the country, right? They stopped carrying my tux. And I can't even, and I can't even buy it. So I'm kind of stuck right now. I'm not sure what I should wear for National Road Trip Day, if it should be a tux, or should I wear something that's more geeky, road trippy? I don't know. Shorts well, I have and, a tux, but I don't think it would fit you. I have a couple tuxes as well. Not but, that's a shot, because I know it doesn't fit me anymore either. <laughs> I have tuxes that fit me, but it's not the tux. That's not the look I'm after. So, but what about the tails? What what I was after those, and then of course the top hat and the gloves and the cane. And I have those. I have the top hat and the gloves and the cane. I just need the tux. Now so, I have that taco song in my head. Oh yes, putting on the Ritz. putting on the Ritz. Marlo putting on the Ritz. Ooh, with the little cheese cheddar cheese. Boom, boom, boom. A little cheddar cheese on a Ritz. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, I'm going to be the plan was I was going to be driving this classic car with classic tails. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do now, but we'll figure it out. So if you're going to be in tails, would you actually be driving the car? Because 
the driver or maybe I get a chauffeur with Butler this. would be driving that. Vehicle. That's interesting. I'm not sure if I have a chauffeur or not. And that might actually be how this works. Cause I cannot imagine that they're going to pull a car out of the museum and give me the keys. Yeah. Don't give Marlo the keys to the Duesenberg. Not that I've ever been in any major accidents. It's just that I tend to have fun with vehicles. Right. Well, and you'll be busy waving. That's wrist, right. Wrist, wrist, elbow, yeah, elbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. with both arms. Oh, yeah. both. See, yeah. that, now you're going to have to have a driver. Yeah, because it's real difficult to do without. So, uh, Well, you drive with your knees. Yes. I've done that once or twice as well. You should ask them. Do Usually while a, reading a map, by the way. Do they have an auto- and eat a sandwich <laughs> and drinking a pop? Do I they, wasn't putting lipstick on, though. Changing the radio station. <laughs> I always used to laugh at, at women that, that I don't know how they did. I always thought about reading a map and like I said, eating a sandwich or whatever I was driving. I do not know how they put lipstick on a car that's bouncing down the road. That's a talent. That's a skill set. That is a full skill set right there. Lots of practice. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. You should see um, if they have an autonomous car in the museum for you. So that would be fun, right? I don't think so. Uh, it's a museum. I can't imagine that they would have an autonomous car in well, a it museum. What, uh, Corvette Museum's got the brand new latest Corvette. That's true. All right. I can check into that. It'd be fun to have an autonomous vehicle. So what's the, the automotive museum? What if it's a Tesla museum? I believe. Did you ask what the museum was? My guess, it's Pontiac's. I did not ask, but since it's in Pontiac, Illinois, my guess is the museum is Pontiac. Which they don't make anymore, so I can see where there's a museum. Yeah. So just thinking that's what it's going to be. I'll have to look this up, actually. I, I'm picturing you in a tux and tails and <laughs> sitting on the back. Sweating profusely in, in a non-air-conditioned car. In, in the Sunbird convertible. <laughs> well, that would be fun. Circa 1982. That would be fun. Is there anything back from the 40s or 50s that are convertibles? Uh, well, a lot of them were rumble seats. Oh, yes. Now we're talking. And we're back. Don't miss a minute of the Tech Ranch as we explore the cutting edge of tech with Marlo and Steve. For more exclusive content, visit thetechranch.com. And just in case you're joining us or just joining us, you're listening to two guys suffering from ADHD who could never talk about the topics. (laughs) So Steve and I are attempting to visit about apps. It says right there in the back of your computer, who rules the world? Squirrels. Exactly. It does say that on my computer. Right next to NASA. It's hilarious, by the way, that you're being distracted by the back of my computer screen now or my laptop. Just saying. Why? It's there. Because it's, it's all about ADHD again, right? And that's the squirrel, thing. squirrel thing. Yeah. So, yeah, we're talking about apps and what we use for road trips since Memorial Day weekend is coming up on us here. And it's the biggest road trip weekend of the year. And it happens to be National Road Trip Day as well. So, I have a list of apps that, that I have uh, compiled to talk about for road trip in this summer. And we're talking about driving road trips. Yeah. And we'll get into other mode travel a little bit later on in the show but we're really talking about the road trip right now the first one on my list is city mapper have you ever used this no city mapper helps travelers find the speediest route to their destination providing step-by-step instructions on where to find the nearest bus or train stations so it's i mean you could use google maps for the same thing but this actually takes that to a whole nother level so it helps you map the city that you're at and gives you an ETA and that well, Google map, so. you get all that in Google maps you it, do. It, because if I'm in a big city that I need to walk from point A to point B, but you just change over the feature from driving or to walking or train to yeah. walking yeah. and it'll route you the quickest way there. I don't think a lot of people know that they can do that though. Yeah. So yes, when you're in Google maps, if you're walking on a street, you can actually change, you can go into Google maps, change the mode that you're, wa- that you're walking and all of a sudden it'll take you, it'll give you an ex- estimated time of arrival, again, based on your speed and stoplights and everything else. It's you know how cool. I found that? how did you find actually? it? Actually, because somehow or another, my phone got stuck in the walking mode and the <laughs> routes are entirely different than driving. <laughs> Were you driving in, in the walking mode? 
Yeah. Oh, that had to be crazy confusing. Like, I can't get there. What, what's going on here? <laughs> As there's a barricade across yes. the street, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it took me that is forever hilarious. to try to figure out how do I get back to, because I wasn't, you know, I used what I used on the app and apparently I must have hit something and it was in walking mode or I, I think it switched on its own just to screw with me, but that's me. That's probably true. Because, yeah, because I know you're not a conspiracy theorist, so. Well, I will say this, though, because sometimes, and, and with AI, this is probably going to be more relevant. What I came to find out with Google Maps was if you put an address in that isn't a longer distance, that is what they deem walkable, it'll automatically default to the walking mode. I see. Or if you're down the road and they're, you're standing by a bus station when you put an address in, even if you plan on driving, it'll default to bus mode or train mode or see it to do it by itself. I what did. I fell into this trap with, there's a bicycling mode yes, on there yeah, as well. Bicycle, right. Yeah. And it was in that mode for me one time and I'm driving, going to this destination and it said, take right and then take another right. And I'm like, this road isn't much larger than a walking and bicycling path. And they want me to drive <laughs> down this and I'm like, this is crazy. People I see, walking their dogs, I, jumping into the ditch. I see no woods. other cars on there. I did. There was a golf cart though. So I'm like thinking to myself, is this really a road? I was just like baffled by this whole thing. Did you drive it? No, no. I pulled off to the side. I'm like, there has to be something but wrong officer, with this. <laughs> my app said drive down this road. It, and it's I, right there. And I'm looking through Google Maps and I'm like, what is going on here? And then the estimated time of arrival was like two hours and 18 minutes. And I'm like, there's this is only two and a half miles long. Yeah, well, away, was, right, yeah. right. It was a little longer than that. But yeah, that's what was crazy about it. So I knew there was something up with this. And then I realized that they had this walking, biking, driving mode that I wasn't aware of too. So I thought it was hilarious. But officer. But officer. That's right. <laughs> Every good conversation with a police officer starts with but, but officer. officer. <laughs> what do you mean it's only 25 here, miles an hour here? I'm All just right. keeping up with traffic. Yeah. Packpoint. So there's an app called Packpoint. Takes the hassle out of packing by creating a customized list of what you'll need for your getaway. So this is interesting. Wait, wait, wait. Define getaway. Yeah. Enter your destination, travel dates, length of stay, and activities oh. that might require special gear like hiking or swimming. And the app will create a list for you of the things you should take so you can so you don't forget the things that See, you should we're be just taking along talking, with you. But officer, it's like picking a different getaway. But <laughs> if there's an app getaway. for that now, w wait a minute, that, that might be good. But, you know, if you're going on an adventure, and I'll just pick on if you're going to hike in Zion National Park, and you don't do this a lot, one, one thing that you might think about getting is walking sticks because there's a lot of paths along there that that would be very helpful for and i'm sure that pack point would actually tell you because you're going to zion that you should have walking sticks with you for this particular trail you're going on the other part of that too like going back to the google maps the one thing you have because i've tried doing this in the past the one thing you can't do with that app is switch between modes of transportation while en route so if part of your trip or your excursion for the day includes biking, walking, driving, or hopping on a bus to get to a park right. to go hike the trip. You can't integrate them all. Right. You have to go to the end destination for your car and start right. over again with your bike or your walk or whatever. Which goes yeah. back to the, our original conversation yeah. on planning out the time where AI comes in now and they can integrate all that. Yeah. Because that's one of the things that's okay. We got to drive to here and hop on this bus to get to this trailhead. And then we hike or bike or and you can't integrate it all. So how do you manage the time and know all the different components? Hey, I need to be home for dinner at six o'clock. So wait a minute. So then you, I've caught myself sitting down and doing the math. Right. They don't like doing math. Yeah. I, yeah. I know that. Yeah, so it, you sit there and do the math of, oh, okay. <laughs> As you look at the clock, that's yeah, funny. It, but it's, it's going to take me 20 minutes to drive there, and then the little bus to get me up there, and this, and walking the trails two and a half hours, and then reverse that to get home. Okay, yeah. So the next app I have is All Trails. Do you like the hike? I do. Bike and yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah. And I'm one of those too, actually, probably more so when I'm away from home than when I'm here. I should probably do more of it here. And I know you look at me and you're like, how does this guy get out and hike? amazing trail system. We do have an amazing trail system here. Yeah, so for people who are not listening or who are listening to us that don't live here in the Bismarck, Mandan, North Dakota area, come here and enjoy our trails. Because we do. We have a very 
good trail system in the business. I could have used that app because before my wife and I got married and she used to live down in the Phoenix area and we were down there for a conference that I was partaking in and she came along to see her former coworkers because she used to work down there and we went hiking out in the desert and she got us lost. I was like, if you don't want to date anymore, just tell me. You don't need to go take me out to the desert and and, get me lost. yeah, Yeah, we both got turned around on a trailhead. So there's a great example yeah. of an app because it was an area I wasn't familiar with. She'd never hiked there either. All trails, if you're looking to get outdoors, this app will provide you with the area's best hiking, biking, and running trails. In addition to details on length, starting location, and trail quality, all trails includes reviews and photos from a fellow hikers or whatever outdoor enthusiasts. You'll find useful information like what to pack, obstacles you'll find along the route, and best scenic spots to check out. This is a great app. And I've used this myself a few times when I'm in areas that I'm unfamiliar with. Four and, and a half stars? I would give it four and a half stars. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for staying with us on the Tech Ranch. Let's rejoin Marlo and Steve as they guide us through the fascinating world of technology. So yeah, Hopper will help you get the best price for your airlines. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So prices of flights can fluctuate, making it tricky to decide if you should book right away or hold off. That's where Hopper comes in, predicting the best time to find the cheapest fares, saving up to 40%. And since air travel has gone up so significantly in the last year. This is actually a pretty good thing. They have another app for that. And that would be? Wendy. (laughs) I swear she used to be a travel agent in a previous life. Is she good at this? She's unbelievable. She had to be a travel agent in a previous life. She's good at finding those deals. Oh, and she works it. It's okay, Tuesday or Wednesday morning early or whatever. And she's diligent. But she always finds us the best fare when we travel. That's amazing. That's pretty cool. You should check this out then. Uh, The app also has a price monitoring feature so that if you select a particular flight, you will receive alerts if the price drops. So if you are looking at something that's five or six months out, for example, you can put that flight in there and what the current price is. If that price goes below that, you will get an alert at that time. So that's really cool. Yeah. Through Hopper, users can also compare the prices and amenities of more than 250 airlines and get alerts about airfare flash sales as well. That was the other part I was thinking about was how complicit or are the airlines with this? It's not always in their best interest. If they're filling a seat, great, because we'll try to fly with companion tickets right off because we have a bunch of companion tickets. And the blackout dates for those. Oh, I know, are terrible. So if Hopper could tell you when, if you're trying to book a flight and the companion seats are available and this and this, and yeah, that might be uh, very good. I'm still trying to get the Tigger song out of my head. I have to, I I can't get rid of it. We'll just move on to another app. Okay, next app. RV Parks and Campgrounds. This camping app helps you locate prime RV parks, campgrounds, rest areas, and and (laughs) gas (laughs) stations. (laughs) <laughs> that's too funny rv, RV. parks and yes campgrounds. yes very like, good like yes. a koa yes or, okay more than forty thousand facilities the app sorts locations based on ratings and includes both privately owned rv parks and public parks to choose from so if you're a camper driving down the road or whatever looking for your next place to stay this will really help you See, some of these apps would be very beneficial to me because if I'm driving, I have this really bad habit. I, I, I want to see something new. So if I'm driving between here and Denver yep. or someplace that I, I'm taking on a regular basis, I rarely drive the same route because I want to see something different. I'll take back roads just to, and shortcuts or what I deem as shortcuts just to see a different road somewhere. Hey, look, the second largest ball of twine in the United States. (laughs) Have you ever seen the largest ball of twine? No, I have not. I haven't either. I wonder where that's located. No. I'm going to look that up. Clark, Google that. Yeah. We need an an assistant. I'm I'm, going to get our, you know what? It'd be really easy. We should just get a Google or an Alexa set up in here. There's one in the other room. 
and just have it. So actually, and we put a, we should get one in here. I've always wanted to do this, by the way, and have Probably it mic'd the most up. Entertaining guest. It would be the most entertaining <laughs> guest, and just have it mic'd up, ready to go at any given time, right? The next app I have is Grab, G R A B. If you don't have much time to spare at the airport, Grab allows you to check out what food selections are near your gate. Oh, okay. And gives you the option to pre-order your meal so you can pick it up on the way. Instead of trying to figure out the kiosk and say, okay, but I like that restaurant down in that wing of the airport. So you could, if you're towards the back of the plane, for example, you could actually on the plane order your food. And as you're going by the restaurant or whatever, they'll have it ready for you when you come by. See, that's convenient. That's pretty convenient. Yeah. As you're wind sprinting across the Minneapolis that's right. airport to try to get to the other gate because that's your right. flight was too tight. Yes, that's exactly right. Gas Buddy. Gas, I yeah. love Gas Buddy. I know you do. I use Gas Buddy a lot, especially because part of the reason I use Gas Buddy is because I take different routes all the time. So I've got my favorite gas stations at different routes that I'm taking. But when you're taking different routes all the time, it's like, oh, where? Because I'm that guy. Yep. I'm that guy. I'll drive 10 miles out of my way to save two cents a gallon. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You really are bad at math, aren't you? Yes, I am. (laughs) It's the principle, Marlo. (laughs) Not the savings, it's the principle. If you're okay with paying extra money for the principle of things, then that's okay. Paying principle on the principle. Yes. So if you don't know what Gas Buddy is, the app you'll want if you're taking a road trip. Gas Buddy tracks down where to find the cheapest gas prices, allowing you to filter by price, location, brand, and amenities. It also provides you with deals at nearby convenience stores. Have you ever taken up any of the deals that they have on there? I've used a couple of them. Okay. Because they'll flash like a yeah. coupon, right? When you, If you're going to go to a place and if you want to get a, a diet root beer yeah. for 99 cents, they'll show that on there, right? But I'm not driving down in Florida too often, so I don't get to use all the amenity. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you, it'll help you nail down the best prices every it totally time. Totally went over your head. The amenities. 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 Yes. Amenities. Because amenities. Amenities. We found in Florida. <laughs> I've swam with manatees before. They swam with me, I guess. Mermaids of the sea. That's right. They are. Let's see here. Next one is head out. H E A D O U T. And that's not your head out the window, Steve. I want to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Although for your dogs, that they yeah, probably that like that, right? It's a dog for it's a dog app. Yeah. Want to know what local events are taking place at your destination? Not a dog app. Head out. We'll show you the top attractions, shows, tours, and experiences in popular cities. Activities range from catching a Broadway play, yoga in the hills. Oh, there we go. That's what I want to do. Yoga in the hills. Yoga in the hills, or taking a See, helicopter it is a dog tour. App. Downward facing dog app. Oh, yes. Yes, it is a dog app. There you go. Uh, probably the biggest thing with Head Out is that it, it has exclusive last minute offers that offer up to 80% off. So if they haven't filled oh. the uh, Yoga in the Hills class and it starts at 7 and it's 6 p.m., you will probably get an 80% discount on it. See, or up to. That is something that most people could use. Yes. Last minute deals. Yeah. That's what this is. Yep. Except for my wife. Not spontaneous at all. Okay. It's got to plan it out. So is there an app for people who aren't spontaneous that have to plan things out? I have learned that my best travel experiences are not planned. Yeah. I'm right with you. I, I, Hey, this is over here. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would rather go to a place and experience a place. This stuff of having an itinerary because it no. by, by the time half the day is over with, you're so stressed out by the fact that you're not keeping up with the itinerary. Yeah. I just don't like it at all. And even like the last time I went to Vegas, right? My buddy CJ and I were going to go to America's Got Talent. And I'm delayed for five hours coming out of Bismarck. Oops. So plans two, shot. $250 down the drain because... The airline decided that they were going to, it wasn't the airline, it was the Vegas airport. But that's the thing. I can, some things you need to plan, of course, but you can't plan everything. Spontaneity. (laughs) 
If you have any questions or want to suggest topics for future shows, visit thetechranch.com and send us your thoughts. You can also listen to past episodes and watch exclusive interviews not featured on the radio show. Be sure to follow Marlo and Steve on social media by clicking the links at thetechranch.com. Until next time, keep exploring the world of living with technology. The Tech Ranch. Super Talk 1270. Welcome to April 26th on the National Day Calendar. Today, we're savoring salty twists and nurturing nature. Whether you prefer them sweet or salty, soft or crunchy, pretzels are undeniably delicious. They trace their origins back to a medieval European monk who supposedly created them as rewards for children who learned their prayers. The classic twisted shape is said to resemble a child crossing their arms in prayer. On National Pretzel Day, let's enjoy this versatile snack that's as fun to eat as it is to shape. I'm not sure I like more the soft or the crunchy kind. What do you like better? I think it depends on my mood. Okay. So depending on my mood, I may like it sweet or salty. And then depending on my mood, I may like it soft with like some cheese dip or crunchy on the go. I think if you're like in a meal mode, the soft ones are better, right? Did you bring pretzels in? Well, I got a bag of them over there, the small crunchy kind. I hope that's okay. It's not. You didn't come prepared, Marlo. I need <laughs> options. <laughs> I have dip for them though. Okay, you redeemed yourself. (laughs) Okay, thank you. From Twisted Treats, let's turn to Treasured Trees. National Arbor Day is a special day dedicated to the planting and preservation of trees. After all, trees do so much for us, from providing oxygen and habitat for wildlife to offering shade and beauty. So grab a shovel, plant a tree, and let's help ensure our planet stays beautifully green. Poem, as lovely as a tree. A tree whose branches wide and strong. I like trees. So does your average cocker spaniel. I know you're planting a tree today. I am. And I actually called 811 beforehand. And they come out and they mark the spots where you're going to dig, right? So that you don't accidentally dig up like a fiber or a telephone line or something like that. That's actually really cool. I didn't know that. That's a good tip. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. I'm Latoya Johnson. I'm Marlo Anderson. Thank you for joining us on our journey to celebrate every day. And don't forget to share your Pretzel Day and Arbor Day celebrations with us using hashtag Destination Celebration Show. Until next time, keep celebrating. This is Outdoor Issues with Neil Roberts and North Dakota Game and Fish Outreach Biologist Greg Gullickson. Open water is upon us. And Greg, your department does a lot of legwork getting recreation areas, docks, and other grounds ready to go. How's it going this spring? It's actually going pretty good. Rather than hearing the hum of the ice auger, it's actually good to hear those waves slap against the side of the boat. That's one thing with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. We manage a lot of waters across North Dakota, and hats off to our partners. Whether it's a local county park board, local wildlife club, we just have a lot of people, even private landowners that we deal with. And ensuring that North Dakota residents have access to some of those great fishing waters. And you know what can be something as simple is just a shore fishing access spot, but it comes down to boat ramps, courtesy docks, vault toilets, fish cleaning stations, just a lot of moving parts to make sure that North Dakota residents and non-residents can enjoy some of these fishing waters. And if you happen to notice one of those spots that maybe needs a little bit of attention or you always wondered, how come we can't have an access in here? Make sure and contact your North Dakota Game and Fish Department. Good stuff, Greg. Hey, we'll talk a fish sandwich when we come back. Some festive days for the family are coming soon. Spend your Cinco de Mayo and Mother's Day outings at Mi Mexico Restaurant in Minot. We'll have specials for both dates. Come experience our full bar, plenty of seating for large groups, the new rooftop seating accommodations coming this summer, not to mention our daily lunch specials Monday through Sunday. It's the best authentic Mexican food in the region since opening in 2008. Check out our Facebook page for all of our specials and events. That's Mi Mexico in Minot, right next to Walmart. 
Nathan and Emily Spickler present the Spickler Ranch Self-Production Sale Monday, May 6th at 1 p.m. at the ranch, halfway between Carrington and Glenfield on Highway 200. Selling 150 yearling Angus bulls, 40 commercial heifers, and 30 select registered heifers, all fully guaranteed. The sale will be broadcast, and you can bid live on the Internet at dbauction.com. They offer a 1,000-mile free delivery on bulls. It's the Spickler Ranch Self-Production Sale Monday, May 6th at 1 p.m. at the Spickler South Ranch, 14 and a half miles east of Carrington on Highway 200. Visit Spickler Ranch. SouthCom for more information. Talking fishing today on outdoor issues and Greg, let's talk cooking. I know you have a northern pike sandwich recipe you want to share today. I do, and I'm stealing this from one of my coworkers, and we do have a lot of great recipes on the Game Fish Department website. The one that comes to my mind right now is a spicy pike sandwich. It's a pike sandwich with buttermilk, eggs, hot sauce, just a lot of good stuff that goes into it. Hey, that'll bring this report to a close. Until next time, I'm Neil Roberts. You've been listening to Outdoor Issues, brought to you in part by the Spickler Ranch South Production Sale, by Me Mexico in Minot, and by Bones Barbecue and Smokehouse in Minot. XXAM, Mandan Bismarck, a Town Square media station, broadcasting from the View Community Credit Union Studio. ABC News, I'm Dave Packer. Devastating tornadoes tearing through the plains in Nebraska, the Omaha neighborhood of Elkhorn. Especially hard hit. Hundreds of homes are gone or severely damaged. Two people injured. In the state capital of Lincoln, a powerful twister crossing Interstate 80. Semi's overturned up here. Storm chasers racing to check on the driver of an overturned tractor trailer. He's okay, he's okay. More than 78 reported tornadoes and counting. This dangerous outbreak is far from over. ABC's Melissa Adon in Nebraska. Second week now of protests here in New York at Columbia University. Protesters camping out behind the gates demanding the university cut ties with Israel. Similar scenes playing out across the country and now spreading overseas. A university building in Paris, France, was stormed by pro-Palestinian protesters. The Federal Railroad Administration leading the investigation into a fiery train derailment on the Arizona-New Mexico border. This is ABC News. In Lakeland, Florida, earlier today, authorities say a man they described as a sovereign citizen opened fire on two sheriff's deputies during a suspicious vehicle investigation. A gun battle ensued. The suspect killed Ho County Sheriff Grady Wills. We never publish the fact that we've made an arrest on a sovereign citizen because we don't want to market for them. But when they try to shoot and kill my deputies, it's important to understand who we're dealing with here. Two deputies were injured. One of them is in critical but stable condition. The final defendant has been sentenced in the death of Elijah McClain in Aurora, Colorado. Former EMT Jeremy Cooper receiving four years probation for a criminally negligent homicide. McLean was confronted by three police officers while walking home in 2019, thrown to the ground, placed in a chokehold, 
and injected with an excessive amount of ketamine to sedate him. Three of the five first responders have been convicted. Dave Packer, ABC News. Super Talk 1270, Bismarck Area Weather. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. Mostly cloudy with a gusty north wind today. Highs around 51. Tonight, mostly cloudy and lows in the mid-30s. Showers are likely on your Sunday, a high near 46. And some rain Sunday night with a low of 36. On Monday, sunshine and 60. More storms Monday night. Grandpa's barbecue sauce made from a secret family recipe. Get it today at grandpasbbqshop.com. It's 48 at our studios. This is McGruff the Crime Dog, and I need you to help me take a bite out of crime. Counterfeit products are popping up everywhere. If you think buying them is harmless, think again. Counterfeits are usually made with hazardous and even lethal ingredients that could harm you and others. And the money you paid, it goes right into the hands of criminals. Remember, if you don't know where the products came from, how could you know where the money goes? You're smart. Buy smart. Go for real. Learn more at McGruffPSA.org. This message is brought to you by the United States Patent and Trademark Office and the National Crime Prevention Council. Conservative talk without apology. The Regular Joe Show with Joe Giganti. Weekday evenings at 9 on Super Talk 1270 and the free Super Talk 1270 mobile app. Portions of the following program are pre recorded. Welcome to the Tech Ranch, where we explore the world of living with technology. Get ready to take a deep dive into the latest gadgets, apps, and innovations with your hosts, the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson, and his trusty co-host, Steve Botkin. Join us on this exciting journey, and don't forget to visit thetechranch.com for even more exclusive content. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Marlo and Steve to the Tech Ranch. In case you're just catching up with us, we're talking about road tripping. See, I'm road tripping and I road trip fast, so you might have trouble catching up. I have no clue what that means. I have a heavy foot. Do you? On the highway. Yeah. A little bit. Are you somebody who takes the road less traveled or are you one who wants to get to your destination so you'll go down the interstate? Depends on where I'm going. Okay. So if I'm going on a business trip or I'm a time constraint right. trip, yes. But if you're uh, in ro- if you're in true road trip mode. Yeah. If I don't have time constraints and I'm just going someplace then I'm like, oh, this is a cool route to go through the mountains or through the back country or yeah, I've not been on this road before. Let's take this road. I'm, I love the road less travel. Yep. Have you share with me maybe an experience you've had on the road less travel? Did you find a crazy restaurant or a bar or anything along those lines? Yeah, actually it, when you take the lo- road less traveled, it's amazing. Some of the But you have to be willing to stop because I'm a big roadside marker guy. So the little historic sites, you don't find those on the interstate. That's true. So my old Gazetteer, the Atlas, they had those listed or have those listed on the roads, just like the paper maps have these places listed on the roads, historic wayside stops that they don't show up on Google Maps. Yep. That's why I like the paper maps. I like that Gazette or the Atlas uh, yeah. style thing, but because I like to stop at those. Because usually, if I'm traveling, ninety percent of the time I'm traveling with one or more of my dogs, and I look at it as an excuse to let them out of the vehicle. That Sometimes makes sense to let me out of the vehicle too. I think the first time is probably my most memorable time, and probably what got me into road tripping a little bit more. I was down by Flasher, North Dakota, and they have one of these roadside signs right there. And for whatever reason, because I always used to be, get to my destination. So and you're more the enchanted highway guy. I don't have to stop. I can see the big sculptures driving down the road. Boom. Just okay. right by it, right? Oh, look, Devil's Tower over there. But have you ever yeah. been to Devil's Tower? Yes. Of course. Now I have. How many but, people haven't, though? But there's, oh, yeah, I there just were plenty of times I yeah. would drive by, right? Drive right by it. So I stopped for whatever reason, and I read this sign, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Because right in front of me was the Bismarck to Deadwood Trail, yeah. and you could still see wheel tracks. the wheel tracks. And I'm thinking to myself, how is this even possible? There are buildings out here that are not this old. 
and or, or buildings that are this old that have been torn down or fallen apart or whatever, but yet I can still see these wheel tracks here. Are you kidding me? I was stunned by that. But that's the part about history I like. So now think about how much traffic traveled on that trail to compact the soil to the point where things don't grow yes. on it because it's concrete. Yeah. And surviving be significant. winters and snow and rain and flood events. And well, and, they, and, and that's significant when you think about it. Hold up as well as right. that trail. That's exactly what I was going to get at. You're driving down a paved road and there's grass and weeds, weeds and everything yeah. coming through these things. And you're like, how does this stuff survive growing through pavement? But yet these wheel tracks from a stagecoach are still here. Yeah, it, you're right. The traffic had to be pretty significant. Yeah, see, that's the history there. side. It's cool. You cool and I stuff. were talking one day, too, about uh, that trail, and you didn't know where the crossing was. So, is and there this, an app this for is that? What, why I love. Oh, of course there are. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And we'll probably find one or two of them. Talking Trail would be one of them, by the oh, way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, check out the Talking Trail app. Tunnel Bear. One of the challenges when we travel is internet access. If you're like me, now I like coffee shops and I will check out local coffee shops. That's the other thing that I love to do when I'm in towns I've never been in before uh, is I'll check them out. And of course, what do you do when you go to the coffee shop? You bring your laptop in, bring your phone in and you connect to the local Wi-Fi. And I, Which we've talked about security. Well, on that. and that's where I'm going with this. You really need to be careful with that, especially if you're in larger cities. Smaller cities or smaller towns are, is bad enough. But I'll guarantee you, if you're walking down Fremont Street in Las Vegas, I'd say 80 to 90 percent of those connections that you see available to you <laughs> are spoofing the hotels or whatever else because they want to just steal your data. And that's a show for another time. But but there's an app called Tunnel Bear, T-U-N-N-E-L-B-E-A-R. If you need to access the Internet during your travels, chances are you'll have to connect to public Wi-Fi, which can be sketchy. Tunnel Bear allows you to connect privately and securely by providing you a VPN, a oh. virtual private network that will encrypt your browsing data to keep your information hidden from hackers and advertisers. Even if you were to connect to a nefarious Wi-Fi. Ha ha, you can't see can't me. Can't see me, right? <laughs> the app comes with 500 megabytes of free browsing data each month, or you can opt for unlimited data at a low monthly price. You do have to pay for this a little. Well, 500 megabytes, if you're only going to check email and you're not going to download anything, probably will get you through your trip, you know, as long as you don't go crazy with it. But they do have a charge if you go over that. But if it's a couple bucks and it saves you from losing data, to somebody who's going to steal your credit cards or access your bank account or whatever it is that you just gave them, it's probably worth it. So Because you'll pay for a VPN from anybody else, too. This is just very, very convenient to have this app on your phone. Um, weather. Weather is always a big deal when you're traveling, right? Absolutely. Yeah. What do you use for weather? Uh, you know, one of the ones back in the day I really loved, Weatherbug. Except it had a lot of bugs in it. Yes, it did. And it is actually the app that's on my list. They've cleaned it up they a lot. They have cleaned it up a lot. I actually Because it got to the point where it was unusable yeah, with the pop-ups. I did, I did actually take it off my phone too. But I've actually put it back on now because I agree with you. And I think there was a security risk with Weatherbug for a yes. long time as well. Yeah. Uh, because of that back door. And that's why you're getting all those pop-ups and things. But they've cleaned it up. It's a good app. I don't know if you knew this too, but... You know, the weather alerts that you get on your phone are specific to the tower you're closest to. So right. you're not, if there's a tornado warning going on, let's say back here where you and I live in the Bismarck Mandan area, but we happen to be in Nebraska, we'll not know about it with the phone alert that we have because it pings, those alerts ping off the closest tower to you, not to where your home is at. Which I so you find, get home and go, what happened? My there is gone. that. <laughs> but I do think that's clever how they have set that up because it makes a lot of sense that that you're, wherever you're localized at is well, where you get the warning. A lot of people, because they have them and they're convenient, are your local television station. They'll utilize that app on your right, phone. Right, right. My radar is one that I use quite a bit. Now I've got a couple different aviation weather apps that 
pilot friends have gone, hey, you should try this. Yeah. I'm a radar geek. I'm looking at my weather app and going, okay, what's the radar say? And I want it accurate. Thanks for staying with us on the Tech Ranch. Let's rejoin Marlo and Steve as they guide us through the fascinating world of technology. But the thing, Steve, with like your television and radio weather apps is those are localized to where you live. They're customized to be local to where you live. That's correct. Because there's a couple different companies out there that supply to the bulk of the CBS affiliates across the country right. or the ABC or NBC or the Fox affiliates. They're- so the challenge, if you want to keep track of the weather you have at home when you're traveling, that's a great source for that. And, and I've got some flexibility because you can turn it on or off on a couple of the ones that I've got that it'll follow me. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So it'll give me the rate, the radar. I'm a radar geek. Right. So it'll give me the weather and the radar from where I'm at. So if you're 500 miles away from here, you can actually see yeah. what's going on in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. And my favorite cities. I've got family that lives in sure. Arizona and California and Oregon and Michigan. And I can pull up different places that I go and those are saved. So if I want to go, okay, what's it like over here? I'll just click on that and that pulls up the local. Now, some of the aviation ones I, I have, the reason I like those is because I'm a weather geek yep. and I love good, accurate radar and I can go in a thunderstorm and go, yeah, here comes a tornado down the street, but no, <laughs> it's going to go two blocks south and we're going to be fine. Isn't that something how it can be that good now? Yeah, it yeah. is. But that's a lot of the specialized, you work with NASA, they've got super accurate. Oh yeah. It's, and, and just and gets better and better. The aviation the industry is in that same space. Yeah. So I've got two different aviation radars and weather apps. So there's a, there was a tornado outbreak between, it was on the west side of Minnesota, east side of North Dakota 10 years ago. And I was traveling over in there. I actually had a meeting in Fargo and I think Detroit Lakes and I was up in Grand Forks later in the day. And anyway, I had, and it was early days of phones with data on them. So there were, but there were some apps and there was this app that I picked up on called Scanner Radio. Yes. And it actually will scan police, weather, fire. I've got that. Oh, okay. Okay. It does a pretty good job. I know that a lot of of them now are uh, scrambled, which is, I mean, unfortunate for what I'm worried. Emergency services stuff, but... uh, State radio, for example, in North Dakota, it's, it, it's an encoded. Right. They had to do that because the criminals were listening to them, too. Right. And I, so I well, get all that. All the police are on that side of town. They'll rob the bank. Exactly. Up exactly. But at that time, they weren't so much yet. And there must have been 10, 12, 15 tornadoes that day. And I was I had this scanner on and I was listening to it. And as I was going by a town, you'd pick up this. I'd be listening to whatever was coming on. And it actually allowed me to skirt all these thunder cell or these tornadoes or whatever. And then, of course, but I took some amazing photos that day. The photos I yeah. got were incredible of these tornadoes. And then I get to Grand Forks. And, well, and, 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 and it's funny because a lot of them are storm chasing apps. Yeah. They're, there's some it's kind of what they use for yeah, them. Yeah. They're, they're storm chasers. Yeah. I was going to Colorado elk hunting one time and I decided to take cut across because we don't like taking the same routes or the time of the day. I didn't want to stay on the interstate because traffic was going to be bad going through Denver. And I was heading down to Southern Colorado and I took the cut across and I'm like, why are all these vehicles lined up? And there's 25 cars here and 30 cars here and 20 cars over here, all parked along the side of the road. And then I'm like, Oh, ah, pull up the app. They're storm chasers. Yeah. And they were lining up for storms coming out of the Rockies, heading into the tornado belt. And I was like, oh, if they're here, (laughs) then I'm guessing I shouldn't be here. So I I saw five tornadoes all at the same time in in a little stretch of highway because that's what they were lined up for. There were supercells coming out of the Rockies colliding with 
air in the planes yep. and they were lining up for chasing these storms. Amazing. Yeah, it was, uh, I don't, I should probably go. More recently, four or five years ago now, uh, I was coming back from a dog show in Colorado, in Greeley, Colorado, and my alert went off on one of these apps. And I'm like, so I pulled it up. I'm like, okay, pulled over to figure out what's going on. There was a band of hail, golf ball to baseball size hail, that was going to be moving across the highway in front of me. And I'm in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming. And so I drove until it wasn't a safe distance anymore and said, okay, I'm going to wait here. And four minutes later, the storm goes through and everything was green and because of the, the hail and amazing pictures. And I let the storm go through and then drove. And I, sure enough, baseball side hail, if it wouldn't have been for the app and the alert, I'd have probably driven through it and trashed a vehicle. You have to, you have to appreciate the day and age we live in with this technology. Yeah. You really do. It's oh, absolutely. Pretty, pretty incredible. So yeah, we're still talking about travel apps, <laughs> but these are, I think weather is such an important part of travel It is, and knowing what's going on around you and you can plan around it and that type. We live in a rural state like North Dakota. Yep. So I mentioned this earlier, the mindset is I need to get where I'm going. You can't, to a certain degree, let weather dictate your life and your lifestyle. Right. Now, there's safe ways to manage that. But if you need to get someplace, you need to get someplace. Because frankly, in a lot of winters, if we let weather dictate our lifestyle, we don't get out of the house no, much. You would just stay in the house. Yeah, yeah. And you don't get across the state to different events. And there's a safe way to get there. Yep. It may take longer yep. for me. And I, I grew up in the east, northeastern part of the state. And there were many times I came from southwestern North Dakota on a hunting trip that, oh, great. We're going to get home, but it's going to take a while because we're driving 25 miles an hour in four wheel drive with two wheels on the shoulder yep. because we had an ice storm go through or there's a blizzard or yeah. You'll get where you're going. You just need to do it in a safe manner yep. until they close the roads. Right. Once they close the roads, then you're not going anywhere. But if you prescribe to letting the weather and the conditions completely dictate, you're just not going to go anywhere. Not in a state like North Dakota, not in a rural state like a North Dakota or in eastern Montana or a Wyoming or northern Colorado or Kansas or Nebraska. It's just be safe, but you got to get where you're going. Are you in your preacher mode right now? I was. <laughs> it's all good though. Yeah. Yeah. But I've always prescribed to, well, and the weather is an important part of that. If I'm traveling, the weather conditions dictate that it's going to be dangerous out, then I'll adjust my travel accordingly. I don't always cancel it, but I will adjust accordingly. It's a, I've driven halfway around the state because there's a, a storm system that's clipping part of the state. It's not safe to travel there. Okay, if I drive west and then south and then east, and then I can get to where I'm going without having to incur the wrath of Mother Nature. It is interesting when you travel to and you get into areas where they have nicer weather than we do, that the what they consider terrible weather we consider it's not that thursday that's right that's exactly <laughs> right like you're listening technology comes alive Let's dive back into the conversation with Marlo and Steve. And don't forget to check out thetechranch.com for more. And we're continuing our talk on travel apps. Road trip. But Steve brought up a lot of weather and his travel woes and not allowing the weather to basically dictate. You won't get anywhere. Yeah. I figured, and I knew this list existed, the 13 coldest places in the United States. How many of them are in North Dakota? Here we go. Number eight is Bismarck. Number four is Fargo. Number three is Williston. Aha. Loving this, aren't you? Number two on the list. Come on. 
I'm going to say Grand Forks. Ding, ding. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. The worst place for weather in the state of North Dakota. And almost in the entire country as far as cold yeah. goes. Average minimum temperature, 3.1 degrees below zero. Oh, it's cold there. Their coldest recorded is minus 43 below. So who do you think is at the top of the list? Tower City, Minnesota. Fairbanks, Alaska. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yep. Actually, you know what, Fairbanks, because I've got friends, there's a bunch of military bases there, two or three, if I remember correctly, and I've got friends that have been stationed up there. You think we have mosquitoes in the summer? I hear they're just like crazy. Oh, good heavens. It's a bog. Yeah. The entire area is a bog. So anyway, and their average in June, in July and August will get between 60 and 80 degrees. That's the warm that they get there. Anyway, I just thought I'd bring that up. All right, back to apps, because that's what we're really talking about, Is travel there a apps. a weather app out there that helps me travel that I can follow warm temperatures? I would imagine we could probably figure that out. But you're going to like this next one. Okay. Because I know you're a foodie. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet you have never heard of this before. And I'm going to try this. The app is called Eat With, E-A-T-W-I-T-H. Eat With allows you let to... Let me guess, let me guess. Okay. So you type in celebrities and then it tracks them so you can go eat with Marlo or Taylor Swift. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so is that, am I close? Yeah, I wouldn't subscribe to that app. Then. Okay. So, and neither would Taylor, Just check by the it. way. Eat With allows you to dine with locals in their homes all over the world. Menus are posted for you to see while hosts will typically list what they cook, the languages they speak, and any alcohol pairings they'll be serving. Not only does the app give you a chance to meet locals and get superb dining recommendations, but it also allows you to enjoy a high-quality meal for less than what you typically pay at a restaurant. Wow. And local flavor. If you wanted to make your famous lasagna... You could actually post that on Eat With, and people then would book with you for dinner that night. That could be cool. I think that would be really cool. It could also be a little scary. Well, I would imagine that they probably have some type of rating system. So afterwards, right. like an Airbnb or anything else that you can rank Steve and Wendy, our five stars, we had a blast hosting them for oh dinner. Oh my gosh, that food was horrible. <laughs> But that and, and that'll weed out the people who actually have terrible food as well, right? But yeah, if you wanted some local flavor or if you specialize in making something, this could actually be this is a gig type of thing for somebody as well. Maybe you don't want to open your home up to rent that extra room out downstairs with an Airbnb, but you love to cook. So you could have people over for dinner. You could entertain and make money at the same time. So if I went to Scotland, I know the really good places for haggis. And I bet you with Eat With, you could probably find that, which I think would be cool. You're going to love the next one, too. This one makes me smile a little bit. The next one's called Flush. I, I'm, no, no, not going to guess. You're not going to guess no, at all? No. Come on. It's as obvious as you can think. Trying to locate a public restroom can be tricky especially in a new destination. That's where Flush comes in. The app has a database of more than 200,000 toilets and quickly provides travelers with nearby bathrooms. You can search without an internet connection and the app will also notify you if a restroom requires a fee. Don't run across that too much in the United States. Pay toilets. I know, but it is a thing it's in some places. It's still a big thing in a lot of places in Europe. Yeah, yeah. But I, so that's interesting though because does it denote Public restrooms, pay toilets. Yes. And the place I'm going is small businesses that no public restroom. They'll have a sign, no public restroom. Some do. Come on in. Yeah. yeah. By the way, shop a little bit too. Right. But yeah, yeah, you can my, my, my guess is it'll list convenience stores and, you know, things that actually would be more considered more public. So, but yeah, I think that's a, it's a wise app to have. Speaking of wise, that's the name of the next app. <gasps> While banks may charge you a fee for transferring money abroad, Wise allows you to make a transfer based on real-time currency exchanges so you can send money at rates the company says are up to eight times cheaper than what you'd find at traditional banks. I might be able to use this for other things as well. So it's kind of a Venmo or a, a PayPal or... If, if you're traveling to Norway and you need Norwegian currency, this would be the app that you would use and you'd get it at, at, a, at the current currency exchange 
rather than somebody's putting a processing fee on top of it or whatever. So I'm sure that they have a little bit of a fee too. But See, my grandfather could use that app. We had a cabin in Ontario in Canada on Lake of the Woods. Yep. And he'd always run the numbers. We always had to stop at the two banks, the one in Bedette, Minnesota, <laughs> and the one in Rainy River, Canada. And because he was figuring out the exchange rates, it's okay, I'm going to get Canadian money in Canada or the U.S. or vice versa. And, yeah, it was kind of a... a Big, I bet it was a big deal. Big deal. In, I was just childhood. talking to somebody who's going to Norway next week, and she was having a heck of a time trying to get Norwegian money. Is it Norwegian money or is it the... Uh, they're not in the euro, are they, in Norway? I believe they are. Hmm. The anyway. It's not is the UK, Brexit. Yes. Everybody else is euro. Although... Locally, there's still local currency. I'm wondering if that was the case because she said she was having a hard time finding money, but she has a banker friend that's actually traveling with them and he was able to secure some. So bring your own calculator. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> I thought that was interesting. So that wise would probably make that a little bit better. Uh, TripIt. TripIt makes it easy to put together a cohesive travel itinerary. Simply forward your confirmation emails. I use this, by the way like your hotel and flight reservations or your rental car reservation, and TripIt will build a full itinerary to help you stay organized with all of your plans. TripIt is kind of convenient, and I like that about it. How many times have you gone on a trip and you've got an email confirmation and you're like, oh, I can't find it, and then you sit there for five minutes Drives me crazy. scrolling, hence the lines, <laughs> You sit there for five minutes scrolling through your emails trying to find your confirmation yep. going, no, here's my reservation right, right. here. Yeah. And it's and, and you've stood in line for a half hour before you got there and there's a hundred people behind you and now you're so you and have everybody's this pressure. on their phone, so the Wi Fi's not working. You have this pressure on you to show them that you have a confirmation. Yeah, it drives you crazy when you have a confirmation for a place and you have to prove it to them that you do actually have a hotel room here or your car or whatever. So, yeah. So TripIt actually helps you with all of that. Because sometimes just whipping out your driver's license and going, I'm who I say I am, doesn't always work. Welcome back to the Tech Ranch. We're thrilled to have you with us as we continue exploring living with technology alongside Marlo and Steve. So what about Waze? Have you ever used Waze before? Waze? W-A-Z-E. No, I have not. Oh. So we're talking about apps for travel, mostly road tripping, by the way. Another good app for the road, Waze, gives you community-based data about traffic jams and information to locate points of interest like the cheapest gas stations and fastest routes. So it's kind of a combination of it's kind of a combination of apps. Google Maps and Gas Buddy. Yeah, Gas Buddy. The thing about Waze and it's being integrated into things now too. So if there's a speed trap, for example, Waze will used to be the way to get notified of those because people would start putting in that, hey, there's a speed trap up ahead or Google whatever. Google Map does that too. That's the thing is that Google Map has now integrated that too. It seems, I feel like Google Maps might have, or Google might have bought Waze or at least they're integrated into Waze now. There might not be a lot of, Waze has been popular for a long time. So if you have a, heavy foot on the highway one of these apps would be beneficial yes yeah unless you're the first person right that's then you better be posted about it I radar guess. detector yeah, might that's be right for that's right but it's for the road construction and stuff alerts yes that's what i use it for so that's the end of my list but i'm guessing you have other things you use for road tripping besides the cooler is there a cooler app no, I just have a cooler in the truck. Do you, have an, do you have an app that tells you the temperature inside your cooler? No, I don't. Is there an app for that? There should be, actually. Could you use the thermometer like from your like when you're cooking for that? Oh, I bet you could. There's Bluetooth and... You know, they have the thermometer that you put inside meat when you have it on the grill so that it gets, when you're looking to have it at 140 degrees... Yeah, it's an app have on your for, phone. Right, and it tells you. So you, if you want your prime rib, medium rare, or whatever. That would be, actually be a good idea for coolers. So think of why, not just coolers. 
a lot of people camp, they have a camper. Yeah. How many people have, oh, my propane ran, ran out on my camper refrigerator. And Oh, yeah. Yeah. You get to your destination and wait a minute, the refrigerator is warm. Or yeah, I think there's... The air conditioning is not working and it's 9,000 degrees in the camper. This, If this isn't out there already, this would actually be a good idea. Because if you're... I do this all the time. I'm road tripping... And what's the place in Minnesota on Old Tan where there's the fish place? You know what I'm talking about? Oh. Like in Haley, Minnesota or yeah. something. And it's the most unlikely place to find a fish. Middle of nowhere. Yes. Yeah. But they're busier than all get out. And if we go by there, Alice loves shrimp, right? So we always pick up some shrimp and whatever there. But if you get, if you put some ice and stuff in the cooler and then and if you're not reminded to check it again a day later or whatever, you might just have a hundred dollars worth of shrimp going to waste. And this has happened to me before. I don't know about you, but it's something that a person needs to make sure that temperature stays cold enough in there. So they can also work. Uh, there's a candy shop is south of Minneapolis in the middle of nowhere. Keeps your chocolate from melting. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of good reasons for this. So anyway, so always bring a cooler. Yes, bring a cooler. a cooler. And by the way, National Road Trip Day is also National Cooler Day. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when we brought that, I forget the name of the company who brought that forward, and we were looking for a day, and for whatever reason, I had mentioned that I was going someplace for Road Trip Day, and they're like, oh, we want to be on Road Trip Day. <laughs> you need to bring a cooler. What, what else do you need on a road trip besides a cooler? Snacks. And, yeah. What kind of snacks do you travel with? I don't. You don't take anything from no. home with you? you? You don't pack anything into your cooler when you leave? I'll grab a few beverages. Okay. But I would rather just get stuff on the way. Now, my wife... So when you say half, stuff on the way, you stop at kitchen. convenience stores to pick up the local fare for well, whatever? I got to stop and get gas or I got to stop and use the restroom. I got to stop anyway. If you stretch my legs. If you're traveling to Montana, for example, from here, would you stop in to get huckleberries? Because I they're love available. Huckleberries. Okay. Because you can't find them around here too much. No. Love huckleberries. Yes. Or blueberries in Washington or whatever. Yeah. So you'll pick up the local fare. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sushi at the convenience store when you go no. through Minnesota. No. <laughs> Two things not on the list. Gas station deviled eggs and gas station sushi are not and should not be anyone's list. Why are they even sold in these places is what I, I want to know. I just think it's I love funny. sushi. I love deviled eggs. Yeah, but just not, not gas buying them at a gas station. Yeah. Not just, happening. That's a lot of no. trouble built in. Well, my that. wife, she's oh, let's pack all this stuff, and I'm like, really? Because the extra weight and the gas coming from the guy that will drive 20 minutes out of his way to yeah, yeah. Things. Let's talk about uh, common sense here again. She just packs everything. I might want a snack. I might I can stop and yep. get a snack because if it's in the car, I'll eat it. That's the other reason. So that's why you don't pack. I always put the stuff way in the back. And it's nice if you go back and get a beverage while you're traveling. Mine's usually See, root a little, beer. Little cooler, beverages right behind the seat. I can reach them while driving. Gotcha. Yeah, I like, I don't know what it is about root beer, but I love a cold root beer on a road trip. And a lot of places, that is still probably the one soda pop. I'm not going to say soda or pop or Coke. Yeah. I'm just going to say soda pop that has sometimes a local flair yet. Yes. You can find root beer made in these kind of offbeat places. You get into Wisconsin, for example, around like the Jelly Stone Park area and around the Dells. There's like three or four kinds of root beer that's made in that area. Cream soda is also in the same boat. Yes, that's and I, exactly I, right. I've been on this cream soda kick lately. I love good cream soda. Orange is also in Oh, it. yeah. Yeah. So another app, by the way, not, and I'm not trying to promote a particular road club over another. I'm looking at my AAA, and I haven't obviously opened it for a little while but because it's uh, downloading some stuff right now. But AAA has a lot of great discounts and things in there. Yes. And my guess is that if you belong to another road hazard type of, I'm not even sure who else is out there, quite frankly, but I know there are others. I think the major car companies too, like I know Jeep, I have, I own a couple Jeeps and I know Jeep has a, 
an app too, and it's road yeah. hazard and stuff in it too. But and it depends. Do you subscribe to their local app, or right? OnStar, for example, with GM products. If you subscribe to that, you get some certain things. A lot of insurance companies will do the road hazard stuff. So. AAA had to reinvent themselves because they were the roadside service company. But when a lot of insurance companies and, and different avenues started doing the roadside service part of that, then how do you reinvent yourself as a company? The app and the discounts and the mass bulk purchasing power afforded them to do that. And I'm just looking at, there's a, a feature called Near Me in the AAA map app. And that is really about the discounts. So if you're looking to save a few dollars while you're road tripping, this is a great app to use. Always a good idea to road trip. Always a good idea to save money. If you have any questions or want to suggest topics for future shows, visit thetechranch.com and send us your thoughts. You can also listen to past episodes and watch exclusive interviews not featured on the radio show. Be sure to follow Marlo and Steve on social media by clicking the links at thetechranch.com. Until next time, keep exploring the world of living with technology. The Tech Ranch. Super Talk 1270. This is Ag Issues with Neil Roberts. Welcome to another edition of Ag Issues. Our guest this week is NDSU research agronomist Leo Bortolone from the North Central Research Extension Center. And Leo, we're talking low soil pH today. Tell us what this means and how it happens. Low soil pH is considered any value below 7. And some farmers are reaching us to us and reporting their low values. But when we find soil pH lower than 5.5, we must take some actions to mitigate this low soil pH. Where are we going to find this? In well-drained, sandy soils. And in some soils we call kaolinite, where? West of the Missouri River. So south, southwestern part of the state and even in north central is pretty much common to find the low soil pH. All right, good stuff, Leo. Hey, we'll talk screening for low soil pH when we come back. Some festive days for the family are coming soon. Spend your Cinco de Mayo and Mother's Day outings at Mi Mexico Restaurant in Minot. We'll have specials for both dates. Come experience our full bar, plenty of seating for large groups, the new rooftop seating accommodations coming this summer, not to mention our daily lunch specials Monday through Sunday. It's the best authentic Mexican food in the region since opening in 2008. Check out our Facebook page for all of our specials and events. That's me, Mexico, and Minot, right next to Walmart. Nathan and Emily Spickler present the Spickler Ranch self-production sale Monday, May 6th at 1 p.m. at the ranch, halfway between Carrington and Glenfield on Highway 200. Selling 150 yearling Angus bulls, 40 commercial heifers, and 30 select registered heifers, all fully guaranteed. The sale will be broadcast, and you can bid live on the Internet at dbauction.com. They offer a 1,000-mile free delivery on bulls. It's the Spickler Ranch self-production sale Monday, May 6th at 1 p.m. at the Spickler South Ranch, 14 and a half miles east of Carrington on Highway 200. Visit Spickler Ranch. RanchSouth.com for more information. Talking low soil pH in this report today with Leo Bartolone. And Leo, tell us how to screen for this. To screen for soil pH, you can start with the yield map. So take a look of your yield map and look in the low yield that you can find consistently low over the years. So if you have a low yield in the map, go there, take some soil samples. How to take the soil samples? You can take your regular soil samples, zero to six inches depth. And then at the same point or around it, you're going to collect the same composite samples in the zero to three and three to six inches depth. And then you can send to your lab that you are confident with and ask for soil pH and aluminum as well. And then you can take actions after that. All right. Good stuff, Leo, as always. And that will bring this report to a close. If you missed one, catch us on the website, agissues.com. Until next time, I'm Neil Roberts. You've been listening to Ag Issues, brought to you in part by the Spickler Ranch South Production Sale, by Me Mexico in Minot, and by Bremer Bank. Contact Bremer for all of your ag banking needs.
can be at risk of heart disease. By screening for a heart murmur, abnormal heart rhythm, or heart enlargement, your veterinarian will be able to diagnose and possibly treat these signs earlier. There are medications that can help delay the onset of congestive heart failure or manage the symptoms of heart failure once diagnosed. Talk with your veterinarian to see if your dog is at risk and schedule that ever-important annual exam. Early detection is best. According to the AKC, the French Bulldog for the second consecutive year is America's top dog after the Labrador Retriever had that spot previously over 30 years. Now, labs are number two. Number three, the Golden Retriever. They're followed by the German Shepherd Dog and then all the poodle varieties at number five. For the complete list, akc.org. For the Pet Minute, I'm Steve Dale. The Ramsey Show. So I am 20 years old, straight out of high school. I moved to Phoenix, Arizona to start my own business, selling furniture. What does selling furniture look like? So I go around picking it up, clean it up, take really good pictures and sell it. I'll probably do about 100 grand this year. Net. Wow. Some of you are standing around with your finger in your ear. And then you got a 20-year-old with a high school education that's making 100 grand flipping used furniture. He's laughing all the way to the bank. The Ramsey Show, starting at 5 p.m. weekdays on Super Talk 1270. KLXX AM, Mandan Bismarck. A Town Square media station broadcasting from the View Community Credit Union Studio. ABC News, I'm Dave Packer. Pro-Palestinian student protest encampments being taken down at universities and colleges across the country. Arizona State University says 69 people were arrested today for trespassing their encampment taken down. Police and riot gear clearing an encampment on this campus of Northeastern University in Boston. With the school in a statement claiming that the demonstration had become infiltrated by professional organizers with no school affiliation. This demonstrator disagrees. We refused to engage in anti-Semitism. We refused to engage in violent hate speech because that was not the policy of our encampment. Arrests at the encampment at Emory University in Atlanta. Tornadoes tearing through Nebraska. Omaha had 42 tornado warnings Friday and the suburban neighborhood of Elkhorn flattened. No reported fatalities. A tornado alert now for Oklahoma and northwest Texas. And at midnight last night, a deadline, and they passed a new contract deal for United Auto Workers and truck workers in the U.S. This is ABC News. Police in Washington, D.C. say they quickly arrived at the scene of a mass shooting early this morning. Police say a dispute inside an establishment escalated and spilled out into the street. Assistant Chief Ramey Lyle with an update. We have uh, apprehended one suspect and recovered one firearm. Police found five adult victims with non-life-threatening gunshot wounds. Outrage over bail for the Michigan woman who allegedly drove into a child's birthday party at a boat club last weekend. An eight-year-old girl and her four-year-old brother were killed and several others were injured. Michael Hatfield and other relatives expressing their anger at a vigil in front of the boat club in Newport, Michigan, Friday. These babies haven't even had a, a burial, a service yet, and this lady's drinking coffee at home. 66-year-old Marcella Sidester released from jail after posting a $1.5 million bond on Thursday, charged with two counts of second-degree murder, two counts of operating a vehicle while intoxicated. Dave Packer, ABC News. The Omaha Steaks Spring Sale is the perfect time to get fired up for spring grilling. Head over to OmahaSteaks.com and save on all your favorites or discover something new. Plus, when you use promo code QUALITY at checkout, you'll get an extra $30 off your order. With 50% site-wide, you're going to want to hurry before the sale ends. Go to OmahaSteaks.com. Don't forget to use promo code QUALITY to get an extra $30 off at checkout. Minimum order may be required. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came, and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards. Rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000, and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. From ABC Sports, 
I'm Joey Wilder. Right now, NBA playoffs, first round, fourth quarter. What a turn. Second half magic. Now all over the Cavs, 104-78, midway fourth. Orlando winning the third quarter, 37-10, dominating the fourth as well so far. Franz Wagner, 32 points as the Magic try and even that series at two games apiece. The Athletics' Sham Sharanya says Buck star Damian Lillard strained his previously injured Achilles during last night's overtime loss to the Pacers, casting serious doubt over his availability for Game 4 tomorrow. Indiana up 2-1 that series. Milwaukee's Giannis, of course, already is sidelined. T-Wolves roll at Phoenix last night. That for a 3-0 series bulge as the Suns are booed at home. Minnesota's Anthony Edwards, 36 points for Coach Chris Finch. I thought he was outstanding as he's been all series, um, making the right play today. It was a little more aggressive for himself, I thought. Meanwhile, NHL opening round right now, second period, and the Hurricanes out one nothing at the Islanders as they seek a four-game sweep. Seth Jarvis with a first-period power play goal. NFL draft round five now well underway. Broncos trade up to round four, second pick, number 102 overall, choosing receiver Troy Franklin. He's the Oregon teammate of quarterback Bo Nix, Denver's first-round selection. Iowa's Tory Taylor, the first punter chosen, number 122 by the Bears. Where's my guy Pat McAfee? I think he calls him an <laughs> alien. He loves this dude, Mel. Tory Taylor was an MVP guy for Iowa because they are going to play defense. They want to flip field position, and he can change the game. That from ESPN. Still no quarterbacks taken since round one. And NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell telling the Pat McAfee show he favors reducing exhibition games to two annually, increasing the regular season to 18 games. The Omaha Steaks Spring Sale is the perfect time to get fired up for spring grilling. Head over to OmahaSteaks.com and save on all your favorites or discover something new. Plus, when you use promo code QUALITY at checkout, you'll get an extra $30 off your order. With 50% site-wide, you're going to want to hurry before the sale ends. Go to OmahaSteaks.com. Don't forget to use promo code QUALITY to get an extra $30 off at checkout. Minimum order may be required. Omaha Steaks, America's a- Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. Loans are subject to lender approval. See website for details. Honey, the credit card bill came and we're maxed out. Maxed out cards, rent is due. We just need some extra cash to help us get by. Maybe we should go to 27cash.com. With our bad credit? 27cash.com is one of the largest personal loan networks. They can help people with any type of credit get up to $5,000 and cash can hit our bank account as soon as tomorrow. When you need extra cash, go to 27cash.com. That's 27cash.com. 20 27cash.com. Super Talk 1270. Bismarck area weather. With your forecast, I'm Corey Hartman. Mostly cloudy with a gusty north wind today. Highs around 51. Tonight, mostly cloudy and lows in the mid-30s. Showers are likely on your Sunday, a high near 46. And some rain Sunday night with a low of 36. On Monday, sunshine and 60. More storms Monday night. Grandpa's barbecue sauce made from a secret family recipe. Get it today at grandpasbbqshop.com. It's 48 at our studios. The next greatest generation is now. By joining the North Dakota Army National Guard, you continue to live life with your goals in mind. Whether choosing to go to school or work at your chosen profession, your service in the North Dakota Army National Guard allows you to build your future your way. The North Dakota Army National Guard allows you to serve your community and your nation while enjoying life right here at home. Live here, serve here. Join the North Dakota Army National Guard today. The best weekend talk lineup is on Super Talk 1270. Check out the program schedule at supertalk1270.com and on the free Super Talk 1270 app. Portions of the following program are pre recorded. Welcome to the Tech Ranch, where we explore the world of living with technology. Get ready to take a deep dive into the latest gadgets, apps, and innovations with your hosts, the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson, and his trusty co-host, Steve Botkin. Join us on this exciting journey, and don't forget to visit thetechranch.com for even more exclusive content. Now, without further ado, let's welcome Marlo and Steve to the Tech Ranch. And we're continuing our con- conversation on continuing road down the road and traveling. We're just talking about how you make your travel better using apps. Anything else on your phone, Steve, that you use? I'm looking at mine right now for when I travel. 
The big ones that I use are the weather apps, the Google Maps, the Gas Buddy. If I need lodging, I will usually use whichever hotel chain that I've got a rewards with. Okay. Uh, I guess I've been doing that more and more too because the loyalty programs are right. pretty good. Book one night, get two free. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm absolutely. In. Uh, but if you're not doing that, then you can use like Orbitz or Travelocity or whatever. Those are usually pretty good. So I have a story to share with you, and everybody should pay attention to this, by the way. Uh, just a couple of years ago, I've been in Rapid City, and you know, I didn't book anything for that night because I didn't know really where I was going to end up. So I'm on Orbitz, and I'm looking for a hotel room. And I forget, on the east end of town, there is like one with a water park and everything in it. Well, not that I want to stay there, but there was some rooms there. And I had booked the room and it was a great price, like 56 bucks or whatever. Because a lot of times they'll have these last minute deals. Right. It's after five o'clock in the evening. Hotels want to fill up their rooms. And so they'll offer discounts on them. I booked that room. I went in there and there's a couple in front of me that had just walked in and they didn't have a reservation. And they asked, what's the price of the room? And again, I had just booked it. I was in their parking lot when I booked this because I just figured that'd be the best route to go. And I'm standing in line there and the person who's waiting on these two, the she's $142. And I just wanted to grab them and say, go outside, hop on Orbitz. They would have saved $90 if they had booked that through Orbitz at that time. And they just agreed to it and paid it. And if I hadn't used the app, I'd have probably done the same thing. But they didn't know any better. There's nothing wrong with saving a dollar or two while you're traveling. That's more than a dollar or two. Yeah. That's a good meal. Yeah. A really good meal. Maybe a meal so and a half. That comes back to the whole tech side of things and in, in all these different apps. It for me it's an organizational side of things to organize all these apps. Cause and, and I used to do that a lot. I'd, I'd go to a Travelocity or I'd go to an Orbitz and because I have an idea where I'm staying, but just to double check the rate. Yep and see if there's a better price somewhere. And, and probably 60% of the time there would be. So mm. the technology behind it is great, but as long as somebody's honoring that, because decisions made at a corporate level with a hotel or an ownership level at a right. hotel right. don't always filter down to staff. Right. So what is that? That comes back to lack of communication. It's you have to have... And, at the end of the day, there's a human factor that has to be functioning as well. Yep. And and I used to have this on my phone. I think I'm going to do it again. Like across here, I have Google, Samsung, and I guess another Samsung one. A person should have, if you do a lot of traveling or are going to go on a road trip, you should have a folder on your phone for the apps that you use for travel. So you're not digging through. You should go through your phone and just put those apps in that folder so you can tap on that. So if you need to know, book something with Orbitz or have TripIt in there so you can tap on TripIt and say, hey, this is the confirmation I have for your hotel. You can't fight this too much because I have this confirmation number that I'm staying here tonight. So going back to you having a fight with somebody or whatever, if you have that confirmation number, there's not much they can do about that. I guess they can still say no to you, but... But it does have, you have that proof. And that way you have all your stuff organized in one place. See, I don't have a folder, which is actually a good idea. I'm going to do that actually. But yeah. I do have travel stuff on a page. So I'll have the hotels that I stay at or the groups of right. hotels that I stay right. at on the same page with the airlines that I fly right. and, and all the airline apps. So I'll group all that stuff together. So I could just flip through and it's everything's right there on a page. Which is nice. Yeah. So either way, just have some type of organization. So what else on your phone besides apps? And I guess this kind of falls into the app. Can you utilize to help you while you travel? Later. I use my calculator. What do you use the calculator for when you travel? Receipts. Because if I'm doing business travel, I track receipts and expenses and I add things and subtract things and then stick them into an app. So you don't... Because I, I, I have a travel app. For receipts. Okay. And you just scan those, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And it categorizes them. So if you're buying gasoline, it knows that and it puts right. it into... Okay. But That's I'll figure cool. out mileage quite often. I see how you're doing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. With the calculator. Yeah. So what about important documents? Would it be valuable to have a picture of your prescriptions with oh, you? Absolutely. So instead of, because people don't carry this stuff a lot of times. I travel a lot for hunting. It's okay. convenient to have 
you take hunting a, license. You take a picture of the hunting license and well, have it on your phone? I'm redundant. I'll screenshot whether it's a hunting license or the barcode for flying. Right. I'll screenshot it and have the app. Right. So, yeah, so try if, to be redundant and have it both. So if you have a prescription that in case you lose your prescription you sh- or your pills, you should have a backup of the prescription. Maybe it's not as big a deal as it used to be because a lot of us now have this stuff on, there's a way to access it online too. But, um, but that brings up a great app. So there's a lot of doctor apps that, right. that are out there that right. if you're traveling, you need access to you know, the one that comes to mind, my chart locally here. You you need to have access to your medical history, yep. your prescriptions. And for me, all that's right in that app, in my doctor and, app. And there might be other documents too that maybe you need to have a picture of or whatever that, that you should carry with you. So you should have that stuff in place. I have a place. digital copy of my passport. Not a bad idea. I have a digital copy of my birth certificate. It's heavily secured. Yeah, that those things are good, especially if you travel internationally. I know somebody who lost their passport and they had a photo of their passport. They actually took photos of each page. And I guess the process, they said that within two hours, they had a replacement passport Right. because of that. If it hadn't done that, it could have been days. So that's, I, I like that idea a lot to take pictures of those types of so things. So I have a folder of important documents. Okay. And then I have a folder for work documents. So if I'm traveling, I have a digital copy of of things that aren't buried in a work email because it makes things way more convenient. Although that reminds me I'm at 98% (laughs) capacity. I need to go in and clean that out. But so thank you for reminding me that. But what are the important documents you should have? So you mentioned the prescriptions, passport, copy of your driver's license. What else should you have from a travel and is there an app for that? Yeah, and I think the, I think for a lot of people that could be different because documents that you and I consider important might not be as important to somebody else. But you've picked, I think, the ones that are pretty general that are important to people. The other side of that, too, is make sure that they're secure. Yeah. Yeah, put them behind a password or something. Yeah, you don't want things just sitting on your phone. Somebody that, steals your phone or right, whatever. I got your passport, concerned. your social security card, or birth right. certificate. And that would be a redundant license. type of protection as well that you have put a password on that particular file or that folder so that people if they do break into your phone they have just one more layer of protection from that for sure and and that brings up two versus three authentication and security is going in a lot of different directions yep And we're back with the Tech Ranch, getting ready for more amazing tech insights from the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. So we've been talking about travel apps, travel tips because of uh, road trip season coming up pretty shortly. We will have this entire list at thetechranch.com. So if people want to go over there, if you're catching the last half of the show or whatever, or just want the list that we talked about today, you can check it out. Thetechranch.com. Don't forget the, the, the tech tech ranch ranch like ranch what you put on your yeah on your salad right yeah but don't put salad (laughs) in the name (laughs) the tech ranch.com tech ranch.com just like the show yes the tech ranch yeah so there are there's other news we should probably talk about so artificial intelligence continues to dominate everything in fact which is where we started with this on the road trip stuff of being able to have that personal assistant with the artificial intelligence that is managing an itinerary a trip uh how cool is it you just go into your artificial intelligence app and go find me the shortest cheapest fastest route with the cheapest gas where i can get my snacks and go to the bathroom every hour and a half boom done so you can do that now i'd be willing to bet by road trip day 2024 It'll there, be different. there will be concert type of services with artificial intelligence that will do everything you just said so from a business perspective Let's talk about that a little bit. So you're a business and you're on a major transportation route. So you're the gas station in, you're the coffee cup in Steel, North Dakota. Okay. You program in because if I pull up 
uh, a Google map, there'll be ads that pop yep. up. There'll be different points of interest. That's one of them. How do you work as from a business perspective with an AI? Because you got to monetize at some point to get your name out there on that list, to be that point of interest, to be that place that people have to stop. And where I'm going with this is there's been a lot of conversations. And when I was mayor of Bismarck, we had these conversations on tourism and what ecotourism looks like. And there was a lot of onus on the connectivity between Minneapolis and Medora, trying to finish up that route because there's a lot of people that hop in their electric car and want to go on a road trip, getting those waypoints in there. What's the role of AI or how does, how do you see that happening with AI from a marriage of business versus we're just going to do this efficiently? It's the great unknown in my opinion, but there's some things that I think are going to happen. Speaking of concierge services, right? So you're an app that's got an AI built into it. Let's just pick on AAA. Uh, my guess is that the AAA app at some time in the future will have artificial intelligence put into it. Most apps like that will have that. And the purpose of the AAA app is really AAA is about the service while you're on the road, right? Concierge of service. Yeah. You're, if your car breaks down and you're a AAA member, that's the first call you make because you need to have a tow or whatever. Which brings up another interesting point. Do you, do you call AAA? Because that's what you used to do in the past. Right. The AI or, will probably handle that for you. Right, or do you just talk to your AI and your dash on your vehicle and go call AAA? Yeah. Because I threw a belt, in which case AAA, does the call even get there? Because maybe AI has a solution for you that is your wife wearing pantyhose. You can get to the next town by using the pantyhose as a serpentine sure. belt to get from where you're at stranded to where there's safety. Or you can wait three hours until they come to you. So th- there's a tipping point. Is that going to be an option where it's, okay, what's the hack for me to get to the next service date. Right. I'm sure there'll be all those Because I don't want to wait three hours. But on the business side, AAA then could go out and say to, to the coffee cup in steel, how would you like to be our prefer- preferred business within 20 or 30 miles of your location when people are looking for gasoline, when they're looking for a quick lunch on the road, whatever. So they'll probably sell packages like that so that they'll be the preferred. And then after that, they'd list a few others. So that would be my guess as to how they'll monetize like what you're talking about. Search as we know it is going to go bye-bye for the most part because artificial intelligence is just going to take over everything but so how do you get to the top of that list with what's, artificial intelligence and that's going to be the a, conduit yeah i i think there's so many different ways right now and it really is the great unknown there are ways that you can i don't want to call it tricking google or whatever to get to the top of search engine list really? but if, if you're I really good if you're really good at it i we guess could talk during the break i guess i've done some of that but it's it's not going to be the same and, and maybe some of it will be relevant, but I think it's going to become hyper localized and, and it'll be really interesting to see how artificial intelligence does referrals to businesses. Uh, because if you're looking for ideas and where to eat out tonight, artificial intelligence is going to give you a list of six or eight places probably or whatever. And, and it might know. But specific to what your appetite is. And how does it know that? You train it. Uh, Right. But you might occasionally, you know, you might not go out to eat for Chinese all the time. And then tonight you're interested in having Chinese. So then, you know, the AI is going to suggest a bunch of steak places because that's where Steve likes to go when he goes out to eat. And tonight you want to have Chinese. So it doesn't always know read your brainwaves off the chip that was implanted. (laughs) There's that. By the way, the coffee cup and steel does have deviled eggs. How about sushi? I have not seen sushi. Have you had their deviled eggs? No. Okay. Just wondering and you're right i have seen deviled eggs there too i've had their sandwiches they're pretty good the sandwiches are great yeah maybe their deviled eggs are okay too i'm not gonna try okay just saying just saying yeah i think ai is going to be interesting when it comes to road tripping and travel in general i I do believe that within a year more and more people will start you'll probably pay to have some type of virtual assistant 
that is like your AI. Snapchat already has one out there. You can name it and the whole bit. Travel agent, AI travel agent. Yeah, yeah. So think about this way, though. So how many people, and I know several, that they know they're going to take a vacation. They know they're going to go someplace over Christmas. And with travel around the holidays, it's a nightmare. Yep. And it's expensive. And I have several friends that have no idea where they're going. They're, what do we book at the last minute that's going to get us out of here? Yep. What a space for AI. Oh, AI find, is going find, to dominate. Find me a that. last second trip that's cheap. Oh, hey, I, I got two tickets to this all-inclusive resort on the other side of Jamaica for $900 right. all-inclusive, right. airfare included. Four-star rating the whole bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're in that position of being spontaneous and, and that's an option that people have to work for. But well, right with now, AI, you don't have to work. Right now, Wendy does all that for you. Right. right? And she spends hours and hours and months hours and, and hours, months right, ahead planning of this time. Stuff out, yeah, right? Not and waiting to the last minute. Now you can have an AI just set it up for you. And if it doesn't find the right deal, you can say, hey, if you can find me a deal that's 900 bucks, I'm going to take it. You've returned. Technology is our passion. Let's jump back into the conversation with Marlo and Steve. So in other AI news, medicine. Fascinating. The, actually, AI in, I, I just watched a story on this the other night. AI in conjunction with robotic medicine, the robotics involved. What can they not cure? It's going to be really interesting. The MedQAI USMLE data set is a multiple choice questionnaire based on the USA's medical license exam. So getting a high score essentially means that the AI could, in theory, get certified to practice medicine in the USA. It passed the exam. Well, when AI first came out, they were running through these professional courses where it takes... Well, it took the years bar years to be a, a doctor. Yeah, years to be. I a think lawyer. ChatGP the, in the first week that it came out, somebody figured yeah. out that it passed the Boom, bar. Passed the bar. So boom, pass med school. Yeah. So now it's pat. So it had a score of eighty six and a half percent. I've seen too where different segments are already at a hundred percent. So give me the portion of the test that deals with patent law. Done. Give me the portion of the test that deals with criminal law. Done. So do you think there'll be some time in the future where it's going to be the second opinion will be an AI for a while? Ooh, that's scary. So you'll have the first opinion from a doctor and then you'll have the choice. I would like to have a second opinion of your diagnosis. Can I have the AI do this for me and see what it comes up with? Yeah, but which AI? Well, you, Do you yeah. want Bob that <laughs> didn't do well the first four times that he took the test before he aced it? Or do you that's want funny. Wanda who aced it the first time through? I suppose that's a good question. And well, but it's a legitimate question. A legitimate my my question is different levels of AI. So, you know, and you and I have talked about having... It's really no different than each person individually. Right. Having yeah. to teach AI to write or think like you yep. with chat GPT. So will it become to a point where that second opinion is the doctor? For, because you're going to have your own personal health care for example, and people should be engaged with their triad of care. So it's you, your medical professionals, and is there going to be four now? Because you're going to have a personal health care AI coach. So why wouldn't you have that? I, I mean, people aren't going to let go of that level of control. There's a lot of people that will. I think there's still a level of care that you can have that's significantly better than what we have right now. And this isn't a slam to the medical profession at all. But as a now, but it's just going to get significantly better. Right. So now yeah. the question, is it a tool or is it the be all end all? So I'm hoping that it is a tool. Is it going to be able to diagnose breast cancer at 15, 20 years earlier than what a mammogram would? Of course. 
that's exactly what's going to happen here. They'll be able to look at you. They'll look at your blood makeup. They'll look at your genetics and say, you have a X factor of getting a particular type of cancer or Parkinson's. They already have these, these markers, but well, we talked about AI, the, the eye droop side of things where, right. where they can, you can download your facial expression yes. over 10 years or yes. five or whatever yep. it is. And it can go, wait a minute, AI can go, you got something going on here right. because there's a little tick on the left side of your face. Right. That's exactly right. I had a very interesting dinner and we were talking about functional medicine. Wouldn't it be interesting that an AI, you have an artificial intelligence that's monitoring you. And because it detects that you're coming down with a cold, and maybe by this time AI has figured out the things that it can do to help you fight a cold or whatever, that it says you should eat some extra asparagus during this meal because it'll help offset your cold. And I do believe that healthcare will probably be the most significantly impacted sector of all things when it comes to artificial intelligence because it's going to be able to do deep dives into things that we've never even thought about before and look at large amounts of data and compare that data and come up with these markers that we're talking about that will and if you knew that you're going to have alzheimer's when you're 20 years old does that impact your life of course it does because there are treatments that can be given now there are, there may be foods that you can eat that that's the old Theological question, though, if you knew the exact moment that you were going to die, would you want to know it? I wouldn't want to know that, but I might want to know that I'm going to have something 20, 30, 40 years from now that could impact my life. That's, and if I can do something now to offset that a little bit, I would do that. Now, there's four basic spaces for healthcare and that have been phenomenal. Robotics space. You mentioned the data space. Yep. The AI, which is unbelievably going to change the robotics space because a lot of the things that you can and cannot do from a medical perspective is the fourth space. Think of nanotechnology. Yeah. You're able to, on a molecular or cellular level, go in and fix a strand of DNA. Or Have you... So there's been a lot of work with nanobots in the last couple of years. The one that was probably most intriguing to me, and I'm sure this is going to, with AI now, is just going to go off the hook. But of course, they inject nanobots into your bloodstream. And these things are in there. This particular nanobot would actually seek out and attach itself to cancer cells. And then when enough of them were there, there was actually a device on the outside of your body that you could use, and I forget the name of this thing, no different than like an ultrasound type of scenario, right? That would react with this and it would actually heat up the nanobots and kill the cancer with heat. Wow. Simple as that. No surgery, no chemo, none of this. And you look at that or think about that and you're like, oh my goodness, wouldn't that be something that we could just inject things that would seek these things out and destroy them? It's almost like having another filtration system because you take a look at what your kidneys do and your liver does and filtering out those bad... Right. Okay, fill me up with these nanobots that are going to go in and constantly enhance my white blood cells. Right. It's going to go and get rid of the things that my natural immunity, my natural body can't attack or can't manage yep. the attack. Okay, we're getting into some very interesting space from an ethical perspective. There's actually talk by like the year 2100 that you won't even know the difference between artificial intelligence and the human body because you're going to be so integrated. You need to speak French? No problem. Oui, oui. Won't that, when you think about that possibility, the, to me that's a little scary, you know, so that last second vacation where we're going to France, found a great deal. We need to speak French. Right. Or all of a sudden somebody's having some type of medical issue in front of you and just instantly you'll look at that. The AI is going to say, oh, that person's having a heart attack. These are the things you need to do. And even though you didn't know that before, now wouldn't that be something? And you'd have that acquired information, that knowledge at the speed of AI. Right. Well, 
Welcome back to the Tech Ranch. Let's get back to discovering the latest in technology with the guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. So you getting tired of the smoke? Yeah. You know, this could hang around for a while. Okay, I'm just picturing my favorite South Park episode, which is any of them, <laughs> and those darn Canadians. Those darn Canadians. Those darn Canadians. It is so Phillips started the fire. It's so early. Not, not, I know this is not techy, but I am just, I was stunned on. Well, there's a lot of tech that goes into firefighting. There is, yes. Fighting wildfires. I was stunned on Wednesday when this came in, though. I mean, it was beautiful, and then it became, we had a little thunderstorm, a little wind, and right behind that is when all the smoke just came rolling in here. Stuck behind the cold front. Yeah. I went downstairs for about 20 minutes to return a couple of emails and do a little work on the computer, went back upstairs and went, what happened? Do you think that there's a fire going on around you here? It's hard to believe. I, I thought there was a fire across the street. 1,500 miles away. Yeah, because Canadians don't put out wildfires. What are you going to do? It's in the middle of nowhere. How, how are you going to fight that? Then there's a 150 of them raging right now. A million square miles. million square miles? million square miles. How are you going to put that out until it snows? Ooh. And it's, this is the thing. I mean, it's something, August in Canada, so we might be okay there. This, yeah, that's true. But this is something that normally would happen in August or September. It's May, and we're dealing with this already. And this could go on. And of course, since Wednesday, it's been on and off, more on than off. And cold. But it's, it, this could hang around on and off for a significant amount of time this year. And will this actually lower the average temperature for us because all the smoke is in the sky, so then the sun is not able to warm up the earth as normal? It did is on Thursday. Oh, yeah. You, you could feel it right away. Temperatures, right? and they're like, yep, 50s, 60s. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just saying that our, our continuation of the weirdest weather we've probably had in our entire lives in a year is happening this year. I'm waiting for the locusts next. Oh, no. We, we Actually, we had that a couple of years ago. <laughs> locusts? Especially in Montana. Well, yeah, yeah. You drive mean, down a road in Montana without sliding around. Oh, my goodness. Did you see that? Did you see the earthworm warning? No. <laughs> it was so wet earlier this week. That I, there, that's there were, not on my app. There, was, there were parts of Minnesota that they actually had an earthworm warning because there were so many earthworms coming out of the ground that it was making the ground out of the road slippery. <laughs> I've seen frogs before with that. I've seen grasshoppers, locusts before. I've never seen an earthworm warning. Is that on my weather app? I don't know if it's on your weather. I'm sure it is if it came through the weather service. Or maybe a DOT app. Like I said, I'm waiting for the, the locusts. And what else is supposed to be at the end of days? Lots it, of pestilence. It feels like it right now. Yeah, I... Just yeah. saying. <laughs> I'm not saying it is, so don't listen to me. It's just one of them. It's been just one of them weird weather years. Already. You won't have to worry about it when Skynet takes over. So, well, that's kind of where I was going with all or, of this. Or the Matrix. It could be both. Or is it idiocracy? All of it combined. Oh, that scares me now. Should we tell people what we're working on now? I think we can. Can we? Mm -hmm. Yes. We have the license. You do have the license. So. And I was accused last night of changing the yeah, world. And it's very techy. It's pretty techy. Okay, well, after your Las Vegas incident, do we want to share it? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. but Let's think, think about that, and we'll talk about we, it next week. Okay, that's quite the teaser. Yeah, it is. It's pretty significant, but it, but it though. Is it could be pretty changing. Yeah, it could be. It's going to be something that, that... And the fact that I have... This NASA, it's called the meatball, right? The logo, mm -hmm. they call it the meatball. That, you know, we can actually put stuff out. I think it's a little undercooked, though. Maybe. The meatball. Yeah. It's blue. It is blue. I like my medium rare. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I think uh, you're right. We'll wait on that. It's probably going to take us longer than a couple of minutes to talk about anyway. Definitely. But you know what we could talk about for a couple of minutes What's here that? is... The process, and just a little teaser, you came up with a great idea, ran it through NASA because of something that they had come up with. Because you and I have talked in the past, you want to get a great ROI, return on investment 
give money to NASA. Oh, yeah. Na- Seven X return on money yes. spent with NASA. Yes, NASA has a return rate that is phenomenal. So what's the process like going, hey, I've got this idea, and how do you vet it to NASA? I think there's a, it's not like it, it, NASA hotline. Uh, yeah. You got to agree. Yeah, what, what is it? It doesn't work like that. Yeah. Or um, did it in your case. Well, it kind of did in my case. Really? I mean, it really was just a matter of bouncing ideas off a few people. Yeah, I don't know the process, the straight up process for giving ideas to NASA, but it happens all the time. There are universities that come up with better ways to make spacesuits. Picking on UND, for yeah, example, University right? Of North Dakota. Yeah, they're working on the spacesuits for the next moon and Mars landings. I think you can get into the game just by being imaginative and maybe getting a little press. And that's not that difficult nowadays. If you have something that's unique and cool, you post it up on social media and, and somebody will write about it. Yeah, or, you put, or put it, it on, on TikTok and then the Chinese steal it anyway. You put it on anything and they'll probably steal it nowadays. But yeah, that's to me the route to go. And, you know, you get some attention and you're off to the races with NASA potentially. So from a security perspective, uh, you know, protocols, what do you, most people just don't go, hey, Bob over at NASA, <laughs> I got this idea. In a lot of cases, NASA will come up with these things, these devices, these inventions, and then it's a case of an application for that. Right. And a lot of the things that that we have in the world nowadays, there are so many inventions that came out of NASA. And then they actually have a program that you can go in and apply to use their patents on different things. So anything from microwaves to, I was going to use Tang, but Tang didn't come from the space program. Although I like Tang. I I do too, actually. I had some for a while, not that long ago. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this stuff is actually pretty good. But yeah, you can look at their patents and, and you can actually go through a process and prove to them that you can actually take this to commercialization and they'll probably approve it. And then they, then you pay them a royalty or a licensing fee back, which is where they make their money. So the United States government makes money back on these inventions that NASA comes up with. And we should give all of our money to NASA. <laughs> and we'd be, out of, we'd be out of the debt in a couple of years. $31 trillion in yeah, debt. Gone. <laughs> but... but- the way it works is most people don't bring an idea or an invention to NASA. No, it's usually the other way around. It's the application side of things. Because they'll invent something because they're working on an issue that they're having with the next launch or whatever, and something will be invented, patented, and then you're able to get it. We need a tricorder. We do. Flux capacitor. Hey, we'll see everybody next week. And that's a wrap on another fantastic episode of The Tech Ranch. Remember, if you have any questions or want to suggest topics for future shows, visit thetechranch.com and send us your thoughts. You can also listen to past episodes and watch exclusive interviews not featured on the radio show. Be sure to follow Marlo and Steve on social media by clicking the links at thetechranch.com. Until next time, keep exploring the world of living with technology. 